Hello, everyone, and welcome to the One World Media Global Reporting Summit. I know people are just starting to join us, so um, just give everyone a few seconds to get in the room. Um, we um, are in day two of a three-day summit uh, that this year has been focusing on the role of filmmakers and journalists to have more impact with their stories. Um, so um, the first day was in Nairobi and today we have a series of online sessions that's allowed us to go to India and Brazil and uh, tomorrow we'll be in London and online with another series of sessions. Um, so in today's um, sessions, we've been really focusing in on films and the power of film to really create change. And we've had some brilliant examples and we have a game today in this session. So um, uh, hopefully we have a good crowd to um, start the conversation. Um, so um, I'll just give you a bit of background on what we're going to hear about today. So um, we have two brilliant filmmakers joining us. Juliana Corey, um, who's the filmmaker behind Guida and her screenwriter and um, producer, um, sorry, Martina Sonson, who um, both of them have really uh, taken impact to heart and believe that it's truly essential part of their filmmaking. And so um, we'll be um, hearing from them about the insights of how they've taken that throughout the filmmaking process. And um, I'm particularly excited because um, they uh, film has uh, won this year's One World Media Feature Doc Awards. And we uh, was a uh, standout for her jury, and it's really nice to be able to say congratulations in person. And um, perhaps the two of you could introduce yourselves. Hi, Emma. I am Juliana Cudi. I am director and producer and writer with Martina of the film. It's a huge pleasure for us to be here. It was super important for us to be at One World Media, it's a very special recognition. Uh, every time that we talk about the film, we like to mention that this is an independent Brazilian film made by a group of women, queer, indigenous, and BIPOC filmmakers in Brazil during one of the most uh, violent uh, governments that we had in our country, uh, in which we suffer a lot of attacks of, of on the art fields and the environment. So for us to be here today celebrating this film and talking about the impact that we had, uh, it's uh, it's really significant. So thank you for the opportunity. It's amazing to speak with the audience. And uh, I'm Martina Sangsen. Um, I'm writer and producer of the film um, and writer along with Juliana. Um, with the film and I echo what Juliana said about being an honor of being here and sharing the impact of this film and um, we are going to tell everyone a little bit about the process of focusing on impact um, because that was the core of the film and I just want to say something that Juliana usually says before any screen with them with this film anytime we're talking about this film I think it's also important to say that this film was made by a constellation of talents um, where the subject, Rita, is also a main uh, you know, participant of the production. So she is a co-producer in this film. And, um, and, and that made a lot of sense in the sense of what this impact that we're gonna share with all of you came about. Okay, thank you. Now you can see that and hopefully we'll hear a bit more about that, how that changed some of the decisions you made and the look of the film. It's a really stunning piece of work. Um, so um, we're going to kick off um, today's session with um, seeing a little bit of the film with the trailer. Um, apologies to audiences if there's some lagging as we're, we're dealing with uh, live streams and Wi-Fi, um, but hopefully you'll still get a sense of the real beauty and essence of the film through that. Um, and then we'll have a, a 
larger presentation going into those details um, from Juliana and Martina. And then we'll be uh, talking through um, that with some questions. And of course, uh, the audience, you're more than welcome to share questions at any point. You can do that in the Q&A function and we'll get to them um, as soon as we can. So let, let's make a start um, and, and see, uh, see your beautiful film. Great, thank you. Let me share some. Eu gosto de recordar todo dia que o que estamos vivendo não é um processo natural, mas uma fase a mais de uma guerra que nunca cessou. Mas o impossível está por vir e o inimaginável nos é devido. O meu nome é Emerson. Eu sou uma pessoa trans não binária. Sou neta de mulheres indígenas com carimpeiros. Moro em Manaus há 25 anos. No momento de turbulência política, de transformações e revoluções pessoais, eu passo a viver o Ira. de entendê-la como um corpo atravessado. Por eu também ser uma pessoa atravessada da periferia indígena LGBT. Eu gosto de entender os grupos sociais perseguidos como as plantas que, sob um território de violência, não deixam de viver. Nós somos parte de uma história que está em curso há muito tempo e vai continuar a existir. Como a natureza é. Nós somos natureza. Seguimos, né? Um, okay, let's start with the statement of the film. This is an article that I wrote. The name is Non-Extractive Cinema Statement. It's on my website. If someone wants to read this full article, will be there. But I would like to highlight the main uh, concept of the impact of this film. Uh, the journey of this film is starting 2019. Martina and I, we were researching for a subject to make a documentary film. We felt ready at that point to tell a long uh, story in a long format. And both of us came with uh, fields of study that it was complementary. And when we met Wida, we, we discovered her work on Instagram and we fell in love with her work. Uh, specifically because we realized that Wida it was one of the most intersectional person that we ever met. Uh, she connect uh, all the struggles in the same fight. And Machina and I, we realized that uh, talk with both of our uh, field of works and body of works. Uh, so we introduce ourselves to Wida and make a proposal to make a story about her life, to make her biopic. She loved the idea. And in a few months, we were traveling to the Amazon to shoot this story. And after that, it was almost two years to finish the film. We can talk about this process later. But what I would like to highlight here is that The first thing that we were concerned when we decided to make this story is because 
we have in Brazil, and we have this in, globally, a very uh, extractive tradition uh, in the documentary field and in the, the film industry in general, which is filmmakers from uh, places of uh, uh, wealth that travel to communities, uh, sometimes communities with social vulnerability should these stories return to the, their cities. Most of the time, uh, uh, big cities around the globe and went to a lot of festivals, win a lot of awards, and these uh, improve their careers and they go to the next story and this film never returned to the original community. We have this ex a very uh, um, long history in Brazil of this extractive cinema, especially with the Amazon. The Amazon in Brazil, it's a place of the whole country goes there to extract and never return to this place, which is the birthplace of our life in Brazil and probably around the world. So the first thing that we decided is to invite Tuida to be not only the main character, but also the co-producer and to write the story. And we, we wanted with this decision to blur this traditional line that divides in film industry, uh, filmmakers as subject and character as object. And this was the seed for the whole impact of this film. Because Wida was part of all the creative and production the season around the, 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 the process. Mm -hmm. And when we were about to finish the film, Wida started to talk to us that this film is for the Amazon people. The impact of this film uh, before festivals, before reach a global audience, is to strange, is strange, uh, strange, strengthening uh, their community in the Amazon. And this is what we will talk about, how WIDA guided us to make alliances and to make the decisions in order to start with the Amazon soil. The most important event that we had, I think it's the event that uh, it's more symbolic about this decision. It's our national premiere in Nossa Senhora de Fátima. Nossa Senhora de Fátima, it's in the outskirts of Manaus, which is the capital of the Amazon state. And uh, Wida lived there, uh, spent most of her life there. Her family is already there. And it's a very vulner vulnerable uh, neighborhood in the Amazon. So when we were about to premiere our film here, we received an invitation for a very famous festival in Brazil, which is very prestigious. It will be amazing for our next step, which will be the commercial distribution. But we uh, uh, had this dream to, it's a very symbolic dream to make our premiere in her neighborhood. So we made uh, an amazing event on the street. We bring a cinema, a portable cinema to the street, popcorn. All the kids were there seeing themselves on the screen. And I would like to read what Wida wrote about this day. And um, this is for me the essence of everything that happens with the film. This film is a response demarcation. It tells a story never heard by the wider world. It is another way to say and remember among us, our faith and strength of a people whose legacy is a struggle, but who also deserve rest and need to feel hope. Nossa Senhora de Fátima is the ancestral and peripheral cradle of this film, a telling of our stories for us. It's not about bringing culture to this land. The film arises from its culture, which is also the Amazon. So today the film uh, went to 35 festivals, uh, win 14 uh, uh, awards. It's on PBS, we uh, premiered yesterday. Uh, but before that, uh, we start in the Amazon soil. So it's uh, strengthening this commitment that we have to democratize uh, access to film, 
to the communities that it's the um, main subject of the film. So going back a little bit to when this film started, I think what struck me and Juliana the most when we met Mira was the power that she had, um, the power of interse intersectionality, right? So one character was able to show us so many layers of, of being, you know? So, and that would make us believe that the climate change and the, the climate justice movement um can be uh can be can be portalized you know can has have the empowerment of edges and groups being coming together and talking about this 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 uh subject so we just interse intersectionality comes about her own life so she is a queer person a performing artist of that's getting more and more recognition in brazil but uh, she has a B, uh, BA and a master in ecology. She is an indigenous person living in a peri periphery, which is a slum inside the Amazon and a big city in the Amazon. Because sometimes we are so used to seeing Amazon as only um, the trees, you know, like the green. And we don't even realize that there's slums and big, huge cities inside the Amazon. She's also an art educator propagating and doing a grassroots work of with the indigenous youth and Riverside youth of, around the Amazon, which sometimes take her up to five days on a boat to get to a Riverside community to do her artwork um, educational um, uh, plan. And um, as I said, she's living in the periphery, uh, creating also these um, this rippling this effect, uh, art word effect that she does um, in the art world and with Riverside kids also in the in the periphery. Um, with the impact goals, I think it's um, it was very clear to us what our impact goal. Um, thinking of all Juliana told uh, all of us before now and uh, the text that she wrote it was very clear what we should do in terms of impact with this film. I also want to say that we started that very intuitively. It was an intuition, how we were going to move along with this film. And by intuition, we started from then on to create a very serious strategy. But our um, when going back to what was the goals of this uh, film, impact of this film, we always felt it in our guts with Rita and it was something that needed to be done and we felt that we had to do whatever uh, we were going to do to make that happen so it's it's a mixture of like of intuition with a strategy that we worked very hard to make it happen so um, number one it strengthened the Amazonian youth and community so we is already doing this work with them we we're gonna have them on screen we're gonna have that ripple effect of Rita on screen. So we needed to break, uh, have them as the most important uh, core uh, public uh, audience of our impact campaign. And secondly, bring together people from different uh, causes and, and social movements, understanding that the core of all these movements, there's one movement, which is the preservation of life. Thinking about uh, preservation of life and climate change is the core of every single um, movement that thinks about human rights, uh, social struggles, and social uh, problems. And now we are going to talk about our main activities, the most special ones, and about our partnerships, because all these events was uh, possible because we made strong alliances with people that are doing an amazing impact work uh, in the filmmaking field and also culture in the Amazon. The first event, uh, our partner was the uh, Escola de Ativismo, which means uh, activism school. And it was a screening in uh, Santarém, do Pará, which is uh, another city in the Amazon for a hundred participants. And Wida was there talking with the youth. 
And also we had another partner, which is Telas in Movimentos, and the translation is screening on movements yeah. uh, with people that it's also doing this amazing work to bring cinema to those cities that doesn't have a theater. And then our second uh, activity was the Morphosi workshop makeup, which is in the film as well. It's a very important part of the film. Uh, the Morphos Makeup Workshop is where Uvira teach the youth and the kids uh, to make this uh, transformation using uh, the elements of their background. Uvira says all the time how it's important for the Amazon youth and the Amazon kids to understand that they need to... Uh, uh, use their craft. Sometimes a kid uh, needs to travel eight hours to buy a glue because uh, he sees this on the television and wants to make this craft and wants to play in a certain way that it's not part of their life. So the Morphosi workshop is part of this uh, work that we do to teach the youth uh, to work with the amazing resources that they already have. They don't need to reproduce what uh, commonly arrives as a narrative for them. And here's the final transformation. And they made like a ritual on the Amazon River. It was the Amazon River or Tapajos? Tapajos. I think it was the Ta Tapajos River, which is in the Amazon. And here, our third activity. Um, our third activity. Climas. Yes, yeah. Climas. So um, there's also thinking of um, our goals. We also um, thought that the film um, has, and the film has an educational side of it, right? So it's it's helping um, a lot of people to talk about climate. And sometimes people that not necessarily know that they are part of the climate uh, you know, fight, but at the same time, uh, people that are already doing this like very, very uh, uh, potent, uh, fight for the indigenous and the climate uh, change and the indigenous rights are the indigenous women who um, specifically in this project, we met Klimas, which is a project that uh, has been working with indigenous uh, human, uh, women, women. Uh, to develop a document that uh, brings uh, solutions to climate change. So it brings a little bit of the academic idea of solutions with the indigenous uh, solutions together to make this document and this possibility of moving forward in, in actions that actually can change uh, the situation that we are going through nowadays. So with Klimas, we partnered up with them to screen um, video performances that came out of the film. So we we um, cut video performances out of the film that would uh, in a very artistic and and uh, video art you know uh, language would bring the main core of the film, and we you, we we use that as a way of uh, bringing them the the message of the film. And right after the screening, um, we invited uh, a uh, indigenous. Uh, filmmaker uh, and her name is Flavia Abchibol and she um, taught an environmental activism workshop uh, teaching this woman and sharing with this with this woman uh, tools to use videos and uh, filmmaking as a tool to talk about and uh, environmental change or as a tool of the nouns. So giving them one, um, teaching them one tool for them to have agency to talk about what they already know so well, but a way of uh, spreading that knowledge to other groups that not necessarily know uh, much about their already their knowledge, right? And we have a video to portray that. 
Now we day a good and not to bang in your nanya. You are good night down on your toddle. Now, nigger, young cat, no night down. Now, may you do the turn a man in the iron room. You might not a fat. You are good touch in my jig and I doubt. It in your toddle, now, nigger. Turn a man in the iron, yank my man, not like that. Yank my tama, not cheer and good tama, not egg, good tama. Cheer not got no yak, okay, the nuna. Another very uh, important uh, partner still thinking about education is FAS, uh, which is a foundation in the Amazon called Foundation for Amazon Sustainability. So they have um, a very important training, educational training happening in the Amazon. So they are a foundation that is able to reach um, communities and riverside communities all over the Amazon. And um, they have a, tra a training for the youth that's being prepared to be the next generation of climate leaders. Um, and at the time they were getting ready to go to uh, uh, COP27, which was in Egypt. So we showed this film uh, way before we were doing like the festival career of the film. We were already starting to do this grassroots movements with the film and the film, film was used as a tool of educational for this uh this youth so we they will screen the film and talk about all the themes and all the layers that are in the film and all the the learnings that could they could take out of the film as part of their conversation they will talk about it after and that will be also a way of making their learning process kind of like um, go through other mediums and they also use that as in a political way, way of educating uh, themselves and others, pe other people, right? And just, I'm sorry, Ju, but just going back to, to here, which I think is also very important to say is that when the film is being used as an educational tool, the core of it, which is very important, is just for this youth to see themselves on the screen talking about climate change and about possibilities of grassroots movements, right? So these kids already know what they're talking about. They is, the film just works a, as a way of amplifying their voices and making them understand that through medias as film and other medias, their voices need to be heard. Yeah, the future guardians of the Amazon. And this is the activity that we talked in the beginning, which is our national premiere in Nossa Senhora de Fátima. It's, it was a beautiful event, and I think it was one of the first cultural events in Nossa Senhora de Fátima. Here on the right, it's uh, Uida's family. We had a background. And to finish here is the balance between um, the grassroots movement that we did uh, with the Amazon youth and the Amazon people, uh, and also the balance with the a global audience, which is our second goal, as Martina mentioned before, which is to make connection with indigenous and groups. Uh, and here it's a brief video about the whole journey 
how we were there on the Amazon soil, on the root of the film, but also we spreading this message, Wida's message, which is so important around the globe and making people understand that all causes at the end are connected with the forest because this is our life on, on the planet. Now, next steps. Martina, would you like to? Yeah. So we're just going to show a very um, a teaser uh, very quickly of our next project, which is a project that um, it was birthed. It started to be birthed at the core of Rita. So while we're making Rita, we started to realize that we're so there are so many artists in Brazil that are kind of like coming together as a vanguard of new artists. They're thinking um, about climate change and using their art as a tool of uh, change and a way, a, a way of making us all come together in the conversation of climate justice.
So just want to say this is a, a series, it's a docu-series, um, a six episode docu-series that we are creating and developing right now. If anyone was interested in knowing more, uh, and if anyone has any interest of knowing more also in terms of, of partnerships, di distribution of any kind of interests, um, uh, players, anyone want to talk to us, uh, we're going to leave our... Um, we can talk about our uh, contact information at the end of the session. Thank you, everyone. No, oh, thank you. That was, um, it's really incredible to see. Um, we've seen the film, obviously, but then to take this like step into how it's been seen, um, you know, the, from the neighborhoods to environmental festivals to queer festivals in different contexts, it's been used in different ways. It's just really inspiring. So thank you um, for doing that um, presentation. And um, just shows that one film can go on to have lots of different um, ways of inspiring new ideas or learning or ed those education pieces. I'd love to get more into that. Um, in a moment, um, but right at the beginning, I, I, we had now have time for some more some questions, and I wanted to start by asking you about the um, way that you talked about the political context at the beginning, and you you know you mentioned that obviously in Brazil at that when you were making this, it was a particular moment, and I just want you know for people who are not. You know, in, you know, we all know um, that it's been a rough few years, particularly for the Amazon. Um, but if you could just explain how that's affected the arts as well and um, the film itself. Yes, sure. To start, the film was completely funded by international partners because we couldn't find funding uh, in Brazil. We try a few grants, but they were completely focused on commercial works. Uh, we heard a lot of friends talking about there uh, was a kind of censorship also of films that was talking against the government or against the government uh, agenda. value agenda. Yeah. So the film was completely made it because we could make an uh, alliance with international partners that was seeing what was happening in Brazil. I think this is, was the main feeling that we had. And a lot of filmmakers was living the same situation as us, couldn't find resources in the country uh, to, to, make a, to make a cinema that, that it was not aligned with the government agenda. As you mentioned, the environment uh, uh, was the hardest part of the Bolsonaro's government. Uh, Brazil also had, it's important to mention that this violence doesn't start with Bolsonaro. Brazil, it's a place where we have 500 uh, centuries, years, years <laughs> 500 years uh, of uh, a development that it's against nature. It, it Brazil, it's also the country that one of the country that most kills trans people, environmentalist activists, and indigenous people in the world. And this doesn't start with Bolsonaro. What happened with Bolsonaro is that they increase uh, these uh, statistics. Yeah. So one thing we also like to say is that. Uh, in that sense of what Juliana said, as Brazil being the country that most kills trans, indigenous people, and activists, but uh, WIDA is a body that, at the moment, the whole the world is trying, you know, Brazil is trying to kill. It's like, it's it's vulnerable in that sense. So the also the importance of that intersectionality of us creating a story of the nouns, but also of of a grassroots movement that has um, the the strength to fight uh, this political moment we are, we are living is extremely important because not only brings hope, but brings a solution, um, a grassroots solution to the problem we've been living for 500 years, as Juliana said. Mm. And so, and and thinking about it like that, obviously the, the government has changed, but there's still a certain path that the 
the country and, and you know most of the world is on um do you think do you think it's changing quick enough well no because uh right now in brazil it's uh for, so for you to have an idea it's beginning of spring right now and it's extremely hot you know so you just see that the climate like the the fight that we have against climate and the fight that we have uh indigenous people have to to uh, honor and keep their land um it's something that should have happened you know hundreds of years ago so um i think it's moving and we are changing um and it should change but uh, I think that we have a problem right here. And I think this film kind of brings this idea. It's not Brazil's problem. It's not Rita's problem. It's not the indigenous people's problems. It's everyone's problem. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. What we see, which is good, which is uh, give us a lot of hope, is that uh, it's the first time that Brazil has an indigenous minist 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 minister. Minister. Yeah. And mm -hmm. She's doing an amazing work. Last week, we fight back the uh, a very, very violent law that was against the demarcation of indigenous territory and the indigenous people won. So we are seeing changes. Yeah. But as Machina mentioned, it's a war that starts many, many years ago, yeah. not only in Brazil, but around the globe. So... Yeah, and yeah. I also, also just want to mention one thing. It's like sometimes we see that the perspective of of politics, and it is a political thing, but it also has to do with exploration of the Amazon through the lens of capitalism and how we are seeing that as a place of extraction, 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 you know. So it's a political slash the system that we have been living toward years, you know, and decades that needs to be um, revised. Yeah, and it can feel overwhelming when you're talking about the scale of time and what um, films like this are able to do is to kind of bring it down and focus us on a specific situation and community and people that are, are working and thinking in a different way. And so I was um, wanting to just understand when you started thinking about this as an impact film, was it always you know, part of that and how how that kind of process began. Uh, I think it has always been an impact film in the sense of the story we've been telling and the way we this we approached uh production, you know, like having Rita as a co-producer writing the story is already, I think it's the first step of impact. And um Every single decision in terms of production and cre creative decisions are related to impacts. And I, again, would like to say that this was something that we did by, out of intuition in a lot of conversation with Rita and coming together to learning process of understanding what this was going to be. And by the time we got selected as one of the films to the uh, climate unit, unit at Doc Society, then we started to have name a name and a methodology to what we already have been doing. We just, you know, like it was a it was a tool and and to put names and knowing a strategy to to come together to what we already kind of like had in mind, but didn't know exactly how to implement. And did that have um did that did it create any creative challenges because you were thinking about impact as well as your like the you you know what would be considered a normal kind of filmmaking process are there any contradictions in that no i don't think so what what i think it's again wida was fundamental part of the creative process too so it was already so integrated with the way we are conceiving the film that it was not a challenging uh, just give us more tools to hear the story that needs to be made and to bring the technical tools to help with us message. It's just give us more sensibility, but not it's not a challenge. Actually, it was uh, much more uh, powerful. Yeah. Yeah. To have 
Uh, it seems like it just added to the depth that you were able to bring. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, uh, that's why I say that it's, it's something that begins with the core of the project because um, it's a way of, it's a change of mindset, you know, when uh, the project itself has that from start, because if, if you're approaching impact already in a way of impact versus creativity, um, then I think it's, it needs to be a change of, of mindset. It's not supposed to be once against the other, because if, if, if your project has from start and its core uh, impact, it's just the way of, of looking at the story as well and the production process. So every every film, you know, um, even in a very positive, collaborative way, has created challenges as a film. So I just would love to hear a bit more about that. I think the main challenge in that we had is uh, we had a film that has a very uh, a strong uh, statistic and violent statistic. We need to make a denounce. We need to honor this. Uh, I don't see what it is. Just a second. Um, Sorry, technical. Ah, tá bem, né? Yeah. Eu acho que a gente consegue. Yeah. So the first thing is that we need to honor these statistics and talk about this structure uh, violence that we had in Brazil. But at the same time, uh, it's a film about an enchanted being. Uh, we have parts in the film that we met uh, indigenous leaderships that talk about the spirit of the forest and how the spirit of the forest is part of their life. So we couldn't approach this story with a very Cartesian way, in a very objective perspective. So it this was really hard to make the balance between these two uh, elements. That's why we decided to blur the lines that divide uh, documentary films and fiction films and we start to incorporate some choreographic sequences, music choices that could transport us, and also a dramaturgic structure uh, in order to honor this aspect of the film and the story and to help people not only understand Ouida's work, but feel Ouida's work and the energy of the, uh, the Amazon territory. And um, when we were talking before, you were talking about using readers' um, writings to help you kind of think through the ideas. So could you explain a bit more about that? Yeah. So um, Wida speaks really well and writes really well. So um, there's a, there was a, already a lot of of, um, of ideas that she's been writing about. So in the process of understanding how to um, kind of put together a film uh, based on her thought and and message and live vision. Um, we we did a work of writing, uh, reading everything she has been written before, and doing some sort of of rewriting of that for a film. Right, so it's a process of just digesting something, a, a work that it is it's done, but kind of like as Juliana said understanding how to bring this together as a film that has denounced, has beauty, has um, a, a storytelling that um, kind of goes, fits, you know, the, the, this rights writings and these messages. So I think it's a process of, of editing, but transforming uh, our work, uh, ideas that already exist in, into a storytelling and, and a chain of thoughts that would, would um, bring us to this journey, right? Our synopsis of the film says, it's we are on a journey. So we always had in mind of like, how we tell the story, the story of this journey, you know, and, and make the audience kind of follow us through this journey. Um, and then, so when audiences are watching this, you know what are from from some of the activities that you've done. What have they? What have the responses been? How have people um, reacted to it? And then, in more 
you know, we saw some of the way that they were doing it as an educational piece. So just wanted to see what people were taking away from it. Hum, eu não entendi. É, reações em relação ao filme e as nossas atividades. Interesting question. I think the main reaction that everyone feels with the film, it's uh, they could see themselves. Yeah. Because we mm -hmm. invite people to, to be part. In completely different scenarios, people feel very inspired because they understand they, that they are part of something very uh, important, which is fight for life. Yeah. In the Amazon soil, it's different because they see themselves in a film that it's not extractivist, that has an Amazonian artist as the main character, as the main uh, figure, as the producer, as the writer, and also they, they see themselves uh, not as people that it's asking for something or only struggling. They are people that has the most important knowledge nowadays and they have something very valuable to offer so they see themselves in a very uh, beautiful way and this has an amazing effect and like an empowering effect but people from another countries like europe for example that see mm -hmm. the films could see a connection as well it's the way you read us talk it's the read us message and the way the film was built and designed that it's an invitation mm, that's a nice way of putting it the invitation i think is um with many environmental films sometimes it's um kind of demanding things of the audience like and telling them what to do or kind of showing the problem and I think this brings people in in a different way and allows them to find their own kind of answers and think about it like that so yes. um, yeah. it creates a common ground you know where everyone can be somehow um do something about it it makes you feel empowered in a sense of of having the chance to do something um, valuable in the sense of um, of participating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you're um, if you are advising other filmmakers who are thinking about use, you know, using impact, what would be your biggest piece of advice for them? Work on something you care about. Yes. <laughs> yeah truly because it's um it's more than a work it's your you're putting your entire um energy um creation life um in 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 favor of that you know um impact is still something that has been like growing and there's so many opportunities um and it's a it's a learning process and some, you know, like you just go, you create a strategy and you make it work, but it's a growing process. Um, people are gonna get it, get affected by it, you know, in a ripple effect, opportunities might grow with it, live it, you know, like be at, at your project with your full heart because from then on opportunities start to rise. I know that it's kind of like, it might seem like a, a not very practical advice, but I think like when you're you're working on a film that that um, matters, you're gonna find the ways of making impact and the story kind of grow. I don't know if this is something that you, yes. you share. Yeah, I think another uh, take out that I have from this experience, and then I will bring to my whole life. It's uh, it's in my statement as well. It's not making cinema about, it's making cinema with. Yeah. And with means make alliances, make partners, bring people to have protagonists. Uh, break with this idea that the film industry has 
that um, the, the producer, the writer, the director are gods, are the main subjectivities. It, it doesn't need to be like this. You can have multiple points of view and you still have a cohesive, co co cohesive, cohesive yeah. uh, film and co a cohesive work. So it's much more fun, it's much more rich, it's much more profound, and it's much more productive because we have people sharing a vision with you, taking care of this project with you. Mm -hmm. You doesn't need to provide everything and also to be the only ones that has the, um, the protagonist. So this is my advice for all filmmakers. Yeah. No, that's really um, just the message to be open as well to what, what might come from the film, I think. Is a, do you think that um, it's a, you know, it sounds like an ideal way of being able to work? And I, is there the, the support systems to allow filmmakers to do that and to be able to, to fund that kind of bigger campaign? Would you would you ask uh, your question once again? You know, yeah. Okay. Um, I was um so this can seem like an you know for some filmmakers it seems like too big a task and that they want to they need the support system the funding to be able to do it and I wondered whether that was available or is more available now than it was. Yeah, actually, the the funding of WIDA was super collective. Yeah, we um we didn't have a big structure when we started to think about this film. We created a structure that was not big, but it was strong enough because we have strong alliances, and not necessarily everyone is bringing to the table money. It's not financial alliances necessarily. Um, we kind of the way well, I think what we were so saying in the sense of like having impact as a core of production is breaking the idea that the film needs to start being made after you have a funding. Uh, we created a different way of like having funding to start um, the process of filming. We created a co collaborative way of funding. What we um, we pitched this project to people that uh, we thought that were aligned with our with our uh, film, our message, and they pitched in, a uh, chipped in uh, a small amount of money for us to make this. And we did this with multiple people. So it's not a crowdfunding, it's a new way of doing co-production. It's understanding that not necessarily you need um, financial structure in the traditional way of understanding it how do you break the traditional way of funding so you can move forward and then from each step of the way we started to think about how we will move on forward we only got um, doc society funding to finish the film in post-production while we were already in the middle of production okay. so we every single step of the way we thought of impact in that sense of, of also production, how we move forward in a non-traditional way. We were told that this is the only way of making films. Is it true? So put you know impact and creativity also in the way of production. I'm not saying that we found uh, the perfect way of making film, but this work for the film we were making, um, I think what we just, our our advice for filmmakers is, Try to create your own way and uh, mm -hmm. let's not believe that there's only one way of making films. Yeah, I was going to say it seems that um, if you take this approach and think, especially I really like your the non-extractive phrase that you keep coming back to. And um, if you just rethink the basis of your how you make the film, you can create it for your situation. It should be in your own context. And that seems to be what you you've achieved with this, and it's what's made it go on further and into new lives. Um, and and I suppose the you mentioned at the end of your presentation your next project, which in a way is this moving into a new life. Um, and I if you can you say a bit more about what you learned, how what you learned from Weda and creating that film 
and how that's translated into this series. Hello? No. Yeah, it's a completely different project because it's okay. uh, it's in the realm of uh, independent film, uh, documentary film. Uh, what we bring, it's the... Um, this idea to, uh, in a creative way, we want to keep the the cinematography and the way we choose to portray this struggle, and as something very beautiful, and very uh, powerful, and also this we will take for this project is the alliance, how to create alliances from the beginning. Uh, we are starting to thinking about the impact of this series, even though we, we don't know how the uh, outcome of the series is going to be, but it's in the core of the creation of the series. So a lot of takeaways. Also, because uh, it's important to mention that Martina and I, before we make Uvira, we had a body of work focused on uh, social fights and social justice and Uida was the, the the materialization of a body of work in different fields like visual arts and music videos and also campaigns and after 10 years of working and developing this way of making films that uh, has in mind all these questions we met Uida and it was the most important work. So mm -hmm. this is something that we, we are constructing from a very long time. Uida was the most important project. And then most of these values we will bring to the next project, even though it's a very different uh, context. Mm. So what are you looking for at the moment? Are you looking for... Um media organizations to support it or other partners what what stage are you at with this project look we are in the the middle of the development and we are starting to close the partnership the most important partnerships of the project like okay. our impact uh, distribution and our impact producer uh, we are bringing a team for the development of the film that involve uh, young people from the outskirts uh, that are dealing daily with uh, the climate crisis. So we are starting to develop our team and we almost finishing the, the writing process of the, the, all the all episodes. Uh, last year, we uh, last year no this year we were at Hill Content, which is the biggest market. Uh, how can I describe Hill it's Content? It's a big. It's a bigger market for films and series in in Latin America. Uh, and yeah. our project was choose one of the few projects that was choose to have a pitching there, and it was amazing. It was the first opportunity that we start to talk about the series. So it's very embryonic, but at the same time, it's been very solid every day. So, yeah, I would say like, for instance, in, in, uh, when we started the, the po post-production process of WIDA, we, uh, we did a residency, a art residency, mm -hmm. where we were able to come together and, you know, kind of think of the project with other people as well. So if, you know, like uh, we are open and we were also looking for uh, art residencies that would like to um, take us, you know, like um, NGOs or foundations that are aligned with, uh, with the story. If they want to come on board and talk about this project in the sense of like evolving it players who might be interested and already kind of like thinking of like how this can evolve to a series and format we are open right now because we are in the 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 the, the process of creating the alliances and structures to keep evolving creatively the project but also kind of like start to materialize it you know like make it into um, a series itself and move forward and also funding of course like that 
is important because when we're talking about making alliances, we're not talking about asking people to work for your project for free. We're talking about finding ways, you know, and breaking with the old um, mm -hmm. you know, thoughts of like how things should be. But uh, we are very much pro into moving also with structure, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to ask what you thought might be different um, with this when, you know, compared to the independent documentary field where you may, you know, how it may be different um, trying to get the same kind of impact if you're working with a series that may end up, you know, on TV or in a streaming or just in a different place to where you're able to have that kind of freedom that you get with independent film. Yes, we will see. Yeah, and I think that's also the thing. Like, um, I think traditionally, sometimes impact is thought as the outcome of a product. And uh, why not start from beginning, you know, like also production decisions and creative decisions and people that come on board, that could also be a chance for impact from the, from the mm -hmm. inside out, you know? So Yeah, no, the film itself is an impact. Yeah. Yeah. So, and this is something that we are thinking right now because it's at the at the stage we are, you know, like impact during the development. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing um about um the making of Weeda and its ongoing impacts. There's a long tail of how this film's gonna keep rippling out. Um is there anything that you didn't get to talk about that you would just really would like to share with our audience? Yeah, I think if anyone wants to get in contact with us, yes, uh, sure. We have a uh, um, Instagram account that it's Rita dot dot doc. Um, do okay. you want to share your email? Address? Yeah, Juliana Curry one at gmail dot com. But through Rita's Instagram, we you can reach us if you have any questions. If you want to see more about next uh, events or the previous events or any questions about our coming projects, we are online through this account. And also you have my email, my personal email. That's great. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll um, keep watching what you're doing at One World Media and any way that we can support you, do let us know. Um, we... Um, are wrapping up for today this is the final session of the global reporting summit and thank you both so much i really enjoyed chatting with you um and um we have a whole series of other events um tomorrow that also look at impact in different forms from solutions journalism to whether journalists can really uh, think about impact and not be activists so um, thank you both um, and thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you, Gemma. Thank you, Gemma. Bye. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye.